Welcome back to WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and WNST.net. It's baseball season two weeks from now, and I could talk some baseball with this guy because he has been known to talk about the Boston Red Sox on the airwaves up in Boston, uh, but he is onward and upward into the Big Apple. He won a championship here and uh, abided his time up in New England as the main event until his son came along, who's now on Broadway for the second time as the lead in Mrs. Doubtfire, coronavirus be damned. The main event is back. Mike Flynn joins us from the Big Apple to talk all things football, baseball, college basketball, and Broadway. Man, your boy, you're having, you're having fun, aren't you, as a parent? You're having more fun as a parent than anybody, right? Yeah. I mean, follow him around and, uh, you know, see what he could do. And, you know, I got a 10-year-old now who last year, you know, just started football. So, you know, these kids starting to you know, get into, I mean, obviously Broadway is a little bit bigger than, than normal, <laughs> but, you know, doing things, watching them play sports and, and, and get in the theater stuff, it's pretty fun, you know. You get early in the deal when they're, you know, pushing them around in strollers and changing diapers. I never thought that was great, but, you know, this is a good part. You know, where your kids get to go out and, and do things, you can follow them around and, and you know, and enjoy stuff through their eyes, so. Well, you're certainly doing that in New York. And uh, before we get to football, bring us up to speed because I do want to—I I, I, want to plug Jake a little bit because I know he's been hard at work. And you know, I said this to my wife the other day. I said, you know, to to get one gig on Broadway and to see it through and to do it and to go back and say, well, you know, we're going to do something normal here, but to get another offer. It really does speak to like when you got your contract from the Ravens, right? Like, like it's one thing to be in there and to be a slappy and sitting on the developmental squad and maybe get your chance. You go to Europe, you get, but but to 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 find yourself in there and then to be wanted another time. I mean, your boy's on to like a real career here. Was he? Is he thirteen yet? How old is he? Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's crazy. You know, any opportunity you can get. I mean, there's only so many shows, and and you know, most of it is in. You know, adult world. I mean, realistically, a lot of those, you know, parts are for adults, so it narrows it, you know, what you could do. So uh, we were lucky. You know, he's talented, there's no doubt, it, it, but he, he works hard and, and, you know, he has a reputation that he's good to work with and, and you know, he's he's talented kid. So he got an opportunity to, to do it again and a pretty good show. I had a chance to see it. I know we just talked before we got on air that, you may try to get down there soon, but it's a funny show. You know, if you like the movie, it's it's that with singing that kind of makes it a little bit more heart wrenching than, than maybe the the movie was. But uh, it's a great chance for him. And you know, listen, you're right. Once it, it's an experience, twice it starts to be a career now. So uh, I'm happy because I could follow him around like my parents follow me around. You get so. to hang out in Seattle and go to all my favorite restaurants yeah, back during Christmas, I just right? I wait until he starts, you know, buying me dinner, and like I did for my parents, and buying me tickets. That'll be fun. Soon. You're you know, hey, the doing, the, doing the stage, <laughs> Dad, after playing in the NFL for a decade. Mike Flynn joining us here from New York. His boy is in Mrs. Doubtfire. The show opened this week. You know, I, I booked you. I, I guess I just wanted to catch up with you. I saw that Jake was on Broadway. I knew we were moving around. I knew free agency was next week. I kind of just wanted to see how you were doing or whatever. And then Marshall Yonda, like, you know, this thing happens and the Great. retirement happens. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm going to reach to Ryan Jensen. I'm going to reach to former teammates. I know Pashos is going to say something. And, uh, you know, uh, 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 I, I'm going to reach to Adam Terry, who's calling Syracuse games. Man, Marshall's really touched a lot of guys. I mean, going back to you, right? Like, Molotalo, like, just there's a lot of guys, right? Yeah, it's, it's great. You know, that was a, uh, you know, kind of game we used to play. You know, when I first got in there, we had older linemen, and then we had Harry Swain, and we looked back, like, hey, who did you play with your rookie year? You know, and, you know, over the course of a 13 years, how many guys he touched And he's like Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like Lawrence Taylor and Dick Buckets. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you could see the kind of guys he played with during his career. But, you know, I – you know, having played with him his rookie year and, and keeping in touch with him, um, I guess you could never predict he would be this great. You know, I didn't. But what I did know, I mean, he was the perfect lineman. He came in as a rookie, kept his mouth shut, head down, right? A rare quality today, uh, did his job, and, he, and he's a self-made guy. I mean, he's certainly talented, but, you know, he's a self-made guy. And, you know, the organization saw something in him, 
and, you know, got him. I think it was a later out pick, right? Fourth round. Well, yeah, and he didn't spend a lot of time at Iowa. You know, I talked to him last year about his relationship with all sorts of people. And a couple of names that I threw out, including you, he keeps up with people. He stays in touch. When I go over and talk to him, it's usually about, like, what you're doing or what, you know, Adam, if the people that are, that are still in his life. And, you know, obviously Kirk Ferentz is one of those guys, you know, from the beginning who was a bit of a sponsor for him, changed his life. But he wasn't like a guy that was the blue-chip Iowa guy that, you know, he juco'd and, you know, transferred in and, and sort of caught fire. And they and and sort of made him so to your point made his life and I'm I'm running this piece with him. He said something to me up at Greenmount Station. The piece is from 2016, and I'm running it. You can find it in the Buy It Toyota Audio Vault. But he talked about how much he hated lazy. He just hated lazy, hated it, and you feel that in him. I think every fan that sees Marshall Yonda from the cattle prod and all of the legend of him sees he very well could be going to the Hall of Fame, but it really was that he he made guys around him better, man. Yeah, I mean, he was a great teammate, worked his ass off, tough. Um, you know, there there are qualities for linemen that you look in, look for, and realistically, right, height and, and weight and, you know, hands and, and, you know, the how quick you are on your feet. I mean, they're all important, but the number one quality of that position is toughness, playing with pain. And, you know, he has that. You know, he's a farm boy from Iowa, right? I mean, he had that farm boy type of strength. Um, you know, 13 years at the level he's played at, could still keep playing. Um, you know, it's like, hey, how could you leave? You still got it going on, but it's, you know, got a good team. But, you know, the grind in your body. I mean, I, I played 11. um uh, and when I was done, it's like I couldn't even believe, I couldn't imagine playing another season. I mean, he played 13 at a, at a higher level of ceiling than I reached uh, individually. So, uh, you know, that's a toll in your body. So it's not, not shocking, but, you know, he's a great guy, works his butt off. Uh, very similar to, you know, myself, actually. Now, he came in, he was drafted. It was a late pick. You know, you get to a certain point, and then they're kind of, crap shoots, but he was a late pick, self-made. I mean, certainly his ceiling was higher than, than mine, but kind of had the same attitude, worked hard, played through pain. Yes, sir. No, sir. Just, hey, you know, I'm going to do my job and, and that's it. So, uh, you know, we clicked kind of right away, uh, but, you know, hell of a career. I mean, potentially Hall of Fame career. I saw this, that he is, it's an interesting stat. I think he's the only guard in league history with eight, uh, Pro Bowls and a Super Bowl win. I think the other is Alan Fanica, and I can't think of the other one. But you know, in, in terms of numbers, it's a rarefied air. I mean, he's he's got the Pro Bowls, he's got the All Pros, he's got the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, so that's a potential Hall of Fame career, which is something crazy. Which you know, for me, it's one more Hall of Famer you played with. One more Hall of Famer I played with, which is crazy. So, Will they adjust you know, that on the in shrine there. in Orno? Will they go back and say Flynn played with X Hall of Famers? Because yeah, I might have I, played with, but I think I think it was like if say for example Yanda got in there. I think and and with Ed Reed, it may maybe like six or seven Hall of Famers plus Ozzy. So they should put on my. So shrine, hold on, right? hold on. Let's let's go through them now. Hold okay, on. let's go. There's let's Shannon go. Jo. Star. There's Ray. There's Shannon. Ray. There's yep. uh, there's Rod Woodson. Right. Yes. All right, Ed so Reed. Ed Reed, um, you played with Dion, right? Yes, Dion. Dion Sanders. Mar- Marshall Yonda would be six. Yonda would be seven, dude. You're at C- oh, J O yeah. Ray. Hold on, I, I can't read my own hand. Shannon, Rod is four. Ed Reed is five. Um, oh, I can't read my own handwriting here. Dion six. Yonda would be seven, and you forgot about Ozzy, which would be Ozzie eight, right? Eight. And then I, I personally think Ben Coach should be in. You know, wow, he's a okay. Hall of Fame type of guy. I don't just because he, you know, transcended to the position and he has a number still. I'm trying to think if anybody else snuck it. Did we uh, but anyway, that's a pretty big number. So yeah, next to up in Maine they could say, Hey, Mike Flynn, he's not in the Hall of Fame, but he played with eight guys, so he he could at least tell you what it takes to be a Hall well, of Fame. You would famer, love to come to you know? Canton, Ohio to see Marshall get in the Hall of Fame, right? You you your boys five years that you, you all you would get the, the Flynn trailer together for that, right? Jake could be in some movie uh, in Italy or something, then he'll miss out on it. But the rest of you'll be there, right? Oh, I would love to come see Marshall. I mean, I you know, I've always you know, when he came in, I mean I was at the end of my career, obviously. <laughs> we were total different points. Um 
you know, and I, I wouldn't say I was a big brother type of thing, but, you know, you as a kid that when guys come in realistically, right, they're always trying to take your job. And I wasn't a guy that would be anti-social to young guys. I wasn't a guy that would, would shut them out. I would not be helpful. I mean, it's just not me. Uh, maybe it's just I was lucky when I came in. There was Orlando Brown, Jeff Blackshear, Wally Williams. You know, no matter what you say, they're great guys, and they did everything for me helped me out, what I should look for, took me to eat. So when I came in the league, you know, I didn't have the experience that some of these guys had. Heck, I mean, I I don't even think we had these big, I mean, those guys were so great. I mean, I used to bring in breakfast sandwiches for them, but this big meal and all this stuff where you see these guys complaining about getting, you know, taken over the barrel with these big meals. I don't even think I had to do that. I mean, I was a practice squad guy, but they were great guys. So, you know, when, when these rookies come in, I'm kind of open arms. I'm like, you know, if you take my job, that that's my fault. But, you know, Marshall always seemed to click right away. I mean, just kind of look at a mirror of me of a hardworking kid that just wants to play. And, you know, there's a lot of drama about him. He's tough, plays hurt. Uh, so, you know, to see where he got, it, it's pretty amazing. Because you knew he was a talented kid and he was strong, but the, the ceiling that he reached is, is awesome. And I'm, I'm super proud of him. Mike Flynn here in uh, Super Proud, and I don't know, you're proud of everything, right? We got, you know, Marshall might be going to the Hall of Fame before you're adding your, your eighth person that you've uh, been associated with, which makes it more fun for me, too, uh, if Marshall goes to, to Canton as well. And, uh, of course, your boy on Mrs. Doubtfire in New York on Broadway. All right, let's get to, um, to free agency, collective bargaining, all that's going on here. You know, union guy and, and radio guy and you and football guy and you, the CBA thing certainly is... Um, extraordinarily unique in the 17th game and playing games in far-flung places that could grow the game. Uh, certainty for TV in a time where there is no certainty in TV, right? Uh, and all of the yep. media is breaking up. Um, labor peace for 11 years. I don't know that it's in anybody's best interest to sign away the rights of some kid that's currently 12 years old, right, in the NFL. But... I certainly see where this thing is going at a time where baseball looks to be an absolute mess. Hockey is going to continue to be a niche sport. And, you know, the NBA has gone global, right? I mean, it's a whole different model. But yeah. for where the NFL is and where the presidency is and where TV is, this is a fascinating back and forth, I think, from a, from a union and, and, a, and a labor negotiation standpoint. Yeah, I mean, you know, big picture things. I mean, I always feel that, the owners have a huge advantage. I mean, it's just, you know, you you have so many players on the on the other side that need to hold together, you know, and, and it's too easy to pull away from, from that group. You know, it's a big number. And there's all different, you know, guys in financial situations and, and all different agendas. So, you know, I always think the owners have advantage at that point just because there's less of them. They have money. You know, they have... And they're unified. You know, the, the other side's they're, they're divided. Uni- right? Generally, but, yeah, yeah, generally they're unified. There's yeah. a few fray here and there, but they're generally unified. They have all these, you know, written concessions from TV that in, if there's labor strike, they still pay some of the money. So they're protected. So, you know, they do have that advantage. Uh, you know, now, obviously, I'm a player or ex-player, so that's how I'm going to view it, and I'm sure people could have their different opinions. But, uh, you know, and, and, but, listen, labor peace is always good for the league. Um, you know, I, I've seen some of the particulars of it. Uh, I don't think the players did particularly well in the last one. Uh, my guess would be is I don't know how much better they'll do in this one, but you know, the, there is the balls rolling, you know, the, the, it's a highly successful league. You're right. It's like one of the few things on TV, uh, nowadays and cable that, that sells, right? I mean, football is the golden egg because people will sit down and watch football and sit through the commercials and, and spend their time. Everything else is, you know, streaming or you, you DV, DVR it or you just, you know, you just, uh, when it comes out, uh, you know, and you just binge watch it. So, you know, things are good. I mean, things are good with the league. Uh, I do think the players probably can see too much with, you know, 17, 18 games and all that, but it's hard. I mean, you saw the last uh, lockout that eventually the players start to get antsy. And, you know, and, it, and I'm not talking about the guys don't have 
a dive to their name. Well, I look, mean, you've already got the Marquise Pounceys and the Rodgers and, you know, sort of, the, you know, some veteran leader guys that are sort of dividing the troops already, right? On, on yeah, Instagram. I mean, there are guys that they are high-end guys, big profile guys that make a lot of money that, that's like, they're going to, like, they want to sign it because why do they want to, you know, upset their apple cart too? So it's just not the guy that, that doesn't have any money. This idea like, oh, they're going to be, you know, guys that don't have any money to be living in the streets. They're going to sign anything to get back in there. But there are guys that have it all. They just, you know, they don't want to mess with their piece of the pie. They don't care what it, you know, the trickle down effect with anybody else, you know, that, that's playing in the league or that will play in the league. So, you know, it, it's, it's you, you try to get the best deal. And, and I'm sure, you know, the, the ex players are always pushing for health benefits and pensions. And then, you know, the guys in the league are the advantages to free agency and minimum salaries and all this. So there are a lot of agendas pulling at that. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think the owners usually win CBA deals, at least in the NFL. I mean, it just seems like the NFL players don't have the power that the Major League Baseball union has uh, that the NBA players have. Mike Flynn joining us here, talking big picture and money in the NFL. And then it comes back to Baltimore and New England, and you're up in New York now. It really is amazing, man, these like eight or ten weeks, however long it's been since the Lamar episode, and we lose the game, and the Titans, and everybody stinks, and we go home, and I go to Miami for two weeks and feel sorry for myself, and broadcast, and everyone talks about this. But when it comes to sort of dusting off, and you go to Indianapolis and you watch NFL coverage of the Underwear Olympics, and you're getting ready for the draft, and you're getting ready for free agency next week. The Ravens wind up with a third and a fourth and a compensatory. They're loaded with draft picks. They're loaded with cap space. They, you know, the Matt Judon thing, and now they've, they've figured out what Yonda, and they're prepared for that. They were preparing for that all along. That the Ravens smell like if I go to Vegas... You know, they're still the number one, number two, number three pick because of all they did last year. And it feels like everyone I talk to that knows anything about football says, well, you got a coach, you kept your coordinators, you got the best quarterback in the game, you've got money, you, you know, your, your, your talent evaluators have been together for 25 years since Flynn was here. Flynn would walk in the building and know where DeCosta and Coquinas and, you know, all the scouts are, right? That they're yep. going to figure this out and they're going to be the best team again this year to some degree. There is an expectation for the, this is the first offseason ever, Mike. We're like, we've never, we've always been the little 10 and 6, 11 and 5, inch and trying hard this is the first year where like I don't think anybody thinks they're going 15 and one but I I think this year is one of those years where you think they're going to win 10 11 or 12 if nothing goes wrong because they're they're good they they, they weren't accidental the league's going to have a hard time keeping up with this and they're going to be a really good football team next year we don't always feel that way in March no I mean I definitely think they're going to be a good football team and you kind of hope that Maybe their season, and I'm not talking about record-wise, but mirrors the Kansas City Chiefs, right? You you look at a couple years ago, they are really good football team. And they, I think they, they won a playoff game, but they eventually lost to the England at home. Who, you know, looking back to that game, you know, you may not remember it in detail as much as I did, but they should have won that game. And defensively, they just, you know, couldn't stop a nosebleed. And then next year they go out, they... they you know, the, the regular season was good, not as good, but they're still a really good football team. And they, you know, finally get to that Super Bowl and win a championship. You know, there, you know, there are, I mean, football, it's a lot different. You know, you see a, a lot of sports, right, where these teams take a couple go-arounds at it to kind of figure it out, right? You know, a couple Well, you didn't go ago, through that, right? I mean, you had this thing that happened. But the, well, was, the, the last yeah, Super Bowl, man, like, we came up like there and – Flash to the pan team, right? You, you make a quick change, you coach, and you, you make a run. Uh, but, you know, there was a time where you remember Green Bay back in the day and, and the Raiders had the runs where they it took a while, a couple of big losses in playoff games, and eventually they kind of figured it out. Um, you know, Denver was like that. They That run that they had with Terrell Davis and Elway, I mean, they lost the playoffs, uh, the AFC championship game. Um, you know, the year, I think Atlanta, or not Atlanta, but Jacksonville, you know, then they figured it out and they went on their run. You know, that, that could be, you know, Baltimore. I mean, it's, it's, you have a young quarterback. I mean, they just need to realize the, the intensity and, the, and what it means to compete at the high level in the playoffs. So, you know, that, that to be his best case scenario, and I think easily could be done. 
Uh, you know, you, you, you're good up upstairs. You have stability there. You got cap space and draft picks. I mean, there's a lot of flexibility, whether it's, you know, it's not even about signing a guy. They have the ability to make a move, move up, move down in the draft to trade for an individual. Because, you know, this time of year, people are trying to, you know, get rid of really good football players because they want to go after somebody else. So they're in a good position. Uh, they're certainly going to be good. Um, you know, they just need to figure out that, you know, when the playoffs roll around, they have to be clicking it all cylinders. I mean, that, I mean, you, you Baltimore plays Tennessee 10 times. Maybe they went seven. Maybe they went eight. <laughs> but on our particular day, you just you watch that game from the beginning. They just were a step slow. They weren't ready to play. Um, so you get back to that. In Kansas City, you, you saw them in the playoffs this year. They look much better. It was their so, year. You know, that, it was, it was their year, right? Yeah. You'd want to hope for it. They mirror kind of what Kansas City did last year if that loss to uh, New England in the playoffs a couple seasons ago. Hey man, get some rest up there in New York. Don't eat too much. Get your exercise in. I, uh, you know, let me flop on your couch or something. If you you need somebody to come up there, keep an eye on a kid. Make sure that you know he's not out doing things that he shouldn't be doing in New York after dark. Uh, you know, <laughs> Uncle Nestor will will ride shotgun. I mean, I'll come up there play Uncle Buck for a week. Can you imagine me and your kid hanging out three weeks, three three week or three days a weekend, and uh, you know, you guys gone on Broadway? Well, the, the kid, the kid stays up later than I do. Does he? He's like a night owl, you know, shows are done by 11, 11.30, he comes home, he's eating, he's hanging out, and I'm already sleeping. He's like up the watching the late night sports. Like, he's up hanging out with Van Pelt, and you're snoring? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I'm snoring. <laughs> you know, but that's the life, that's the theater life, you know. They, they, you know, if he was of age, you know, he'd be going out with the cask, you know, they go out and eat after, you know what I mean? It's just a, a different world than, than sleep all day because their their whole gig is from not till you're know, eighteen, Jake. On. Come on, you can't do that till you get a little older. Okay, well, <laughs> they say the neon lights are bright on Broadway. Mike Flynn's on Broadway. His boy Jake, uh, a lead in Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, he's still tweeting from time to time at Flynn nine eight five and uh, hanging out in New England. Uh, and uh, Mary and the kids are doing well. We'll get you back down here for a crab cake at some point, bro. But uh, in the mean, how about the Pearl Jam tour? Anything you want to say about that? I mean, I know. This is this is disappointed lots and lots of people. You, me, oh, Eric, yeah. DeCosta, and everybody else. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about. I mean, I was excited about heading down to Baltimore to see the show in New York. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, what could you do? I mean, this coronavirus and, and the way it's spread, and a lot of precaution, and, and you know, I get it. Uh, but I got to, you know, for for Pearl Jam to cancel a concert like that. I mean, listen. They got the albums, they've toured them, they got tons of money, but I mean, that's a big call. I mean, you know, the, the arenas that they sold out. But, you know, for me personally, it's like guys who have been there, you've been there. I mean, it's a pretty good experience. You know, it's, it's you know, I sent you a text the other day. I mean, it's, I'm getting too old, man. Concerts and all, festivals. So if I go to some sporting events, but concerts, that's a young man's game. Pearl Jam is the only thing that can get me off the couch anymore. So, well, the Stones are so touring this I, year. I, and if, you I, know, what's the, that? The coronavirus doesn't get the Stones. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm worried. If it got Pearl Jam off the road, how the hell is Mick and Keith? I mean, they're probably immune to coronavirus when you think about it. Oh, my God. The, the <laughs> coronavirus. I mean, I think if they drank a glass of coronavirus, it would just <laughs> die in their bloodstream. You know what I mean? <laughs> See, the problem with Pearl Jam is, you know, they, they, they did have a run, and there some of those guys with the band issues, but they got sober too early, and they never got that far off the reservation. You know, the Stones, I mean, they're, they're like lobotomized, but, you know, that's the one thing that gets me off the couch, man, is Pearl Jam concerts, and now I can't go. So for selfish reasons, I, you know, I am very, very disappointed. I mean, I said, right as soon as I found out, I sent you a text of the uh, the tweet they sent out, and you couldn't believe it. Well, I was already tailgating so, for the show. I mean, hell, I mean, I know, the show was three and a half weeks mean, away. Uh, uh, I don't know what to do now. Hey, look, dude, I, 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 I because you're in New York, I want to give you a little tip here to make you feel better about Pearl Jam, right? Because I've, I was in New York two weeks ago. Uh, uh, we went up to, uh, to, believe it or not, to see the Eagles, and wound up not seeing the Eagles. We went, went up over in Brooklyn, seeing this great band called Duran Jones and the Indications uh, at the Brooklyn Bowl, and I ate the best pizza in the world over there at Joe's. So outside of Pizza John's, of course, but I mean the best pizza in Brooklyn. So here's the deal. About 20 years ago, you asked. 
ask me where the best place in Baltimore to get wings was, right? Like, I just remember this because you were in search of wings. I have yep. found the best wings in the world, okay? And, and oh. you are 15, well, you're probably six blocks away because there's a couple locations. But I want you to go specifically to this location because it's a, it's a better vibe. I want you to go to, to the one in NoHo, which is down like in East Village. It's called yep. Ipudo, I-P-P-U-D-O, okay? Take the lad oh, down it. there, jump in the cab, and get the wings, and get some ramen, okay? All right. That's it. Fantastic. I, I also have some great dessert places, too. By the way, you'll love this, too. There's a place in New York called Harbs, H-A-R-B-S, which is what everyone calls John Harbaugh. So yep. it's, a, it's a Japanese uh, a pastry dessert place, very high end, and I always wind up taking a picture for him and sending it to him because it's there. So I, I've been doing a lot of exploring. I mean, I found these these Shanghai uh, dumplings that I love so much, uh, about ten blocks south of there, right near Soho. Phenomenal! I could eat my way through New York, Flinter. I'm coming up. We're gonna hang out in here. How long's your boy on on Broadway? How long's this run? Uh, he'll be there at least until September, middle of September. Oh wow, we got time. Uh, yep. That that's his run, and depending how it goes, but uh, you know that's what his contract signed for. So, all right, I'm coming to New York. We're not going time. to Yankee games or any of that. No, we're just going to well, eat. Eat, eat, or, eat or drink our way through New York. That's a lot better than Yankee games. Dude, can, can you get a sitter for Jake? And like, can Mary come down? You and I. Just, I mean, like, how how are we going to work this when I'm up there? No, I just leave my kids alone. Anymore. That's right. I don't care anymore. That's, that's right. Right. It's New York City. These kids are taking the subway at eat. All I see you know in mean? your <laughs> kid in doing this is I see sort of the home alone kid. You know what I mean? Like sort of yeah. Macaulay Culkin in New York and all that. So, oh, oh, Jake. Yes, oh, I mean Jake. I got the other. I'm talking about the other kids. Uh, Jake, that guy is more mature. Honestly, he could live in New York by himself. The guy would get up every day. He'd read the paper. He'd get a coffee. He'd walk to work. I mean, that guy's more mature than I am. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not making fun of myself. I'm not trying to be self-deprecating. I'm just You just got a good kid. The, the, the kid's, yeah, the, the, the just, kid's got a gift. Facts. He's just he's an old soul. You know, like, and maybe that's why he's good at, at acting and deal with adults. But, <laughs> yeah, it's the other kids that I have to worry about. All right. No, well. no. We, but I still I lock them up. I have a lock from the outside. So they can't get out of the apartment here. We'll be good, Nestor. Take him out for wings. Be good to the kid, all right? I will, buddy. He's, he, he's paying your way through New York. <laughs> yes, that's true. That is true. Making more money than me. <laughs> see, you, see you later, Flinner. <laughs> all right, buddy. There he goes, Mike Flynn, Flynn 98. Uh, you know, I met him when he was a slappy on the side of the uh, Ravens roster back in 1998, and here we are, 22 years later, eating our way through Manhattan. <laughs> Hopefully. Coronavirus be damned. Billy Joel's playing next week. How are you going to cancel Billy Joel? Nasty at WNST.net is the way to find me. The buyatoyota.com audio vault there. The aforementioned show at the Rofo Arena with Pearl Jam. Postponed. A little disappointed about that. As long as I get the fried chicken and the Western fries, all is well. Thank you, Rofo. Gas me up. Get me to New York. Our friends at Liberty Pure Solutions have clean water. I have two cases in my trunk. I've been drinking it, which is... Uh, why I'm on shortage here on the set, as well as our Terps Magma Lamp from Sportaculture. Court sent this over. It's got a beautiful Terps logo, Testudo right here on that. It's also a speaker, but it has gold magma flowing through it. You can get that at Sportaculture. Let's go, Terps. Maryland, we're all behind you. Big appreciation to Mike Flynn. I will get to New York as soon as this coronavirus scare thing goes away. My wife and I slated to go to her donor's wedding on April the 4th in Essen, Germany. Cross your fingers for us and everyone else. Wash your hands. We are WNST.net AM 1570 and WNST Towson, Baltimore. And we never stop uh, using Perel and talking Baltimore sports.